Ah, good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. We're going to look in uh, CS6 today, and we're going to be looking at some alternative black and white conversion methods. Now, you all know that the easy one to get call up is to just go into your adjustment panel and hover over that, and that'll bring up your black and white adjustment. We're not going to do that. We're going to look, and uh, we're going to look in the channels. Now, this image here is one I shot at uh, Solver Keys. Uh, it was a very misty, foggy night. Uh, I gave this a long exposure, about 30 seconds, and that smoothed out all the water in the uh, locks here. Also made the clouds that were overhead, they all sort of merged into one. And the reflection was from the sodium street lights, which are around the outside of the keys. It's given this rather interesting orange color to the image. Uh, we could use that in the black and white conversion. I want you to go and have a look at your channels. Now, if your channels aren't there, you need to go across the window. And you see next to there, the little tick next to it, just make sure it's ticked, and that'll make sure that your channels are available for you to have a look at. Okay, so let's have a look in the red one. That's um, a pretty bright conversion. Uh, that one is ooh, not so bad in the middle, and that one's a heavy one. And I want to use this information in these three channels here uh, to create uh, an interesting black and white conversion for you. Uh, and to use that, let's just click on the red again. I'm going to go to the flyout menu here, and if you have a look down here, there's a button there that says split channels. Now, once you split the channels, there's no going back. The image is broken up into three, sep your three separate R, G, and B channels. Uh, you might want to work on a duplicate document, uh, so you can go back into your layers and just call it duplicate, duplicate document. Easy for me to say. Uh, uh, but I'm just going to split the channel to this one, so I'm just going to click it, and all of a sudden, yeah, but I do. Uh, oh, we've got three different black and white conversions. Uh, now you could use that. That could be the end of the whole thing. You might want to save those out. Um, before you save them out, I'm going to suggest you do one thing. And if you just go into the first one, which is your red channel, we just convert it back into an RGB. Uh, the reason being, you might want to add a tint to it. You might want to take it into curves, say, and uh, tint one of the channels. Uh, you might want to make it into duotone. So give yourself the option, convert it into an RGB. Let's go mode RGB. And I'm going to do the same to this one. Because really, I'm just going to use these two channels just to show you what's possible. Let's go back into layers again. And again, let's just make sure we're in the layers on that one as well. Uh, because I'm going to drag this layer, this one here, uh, we're going to move it across and we're going to drop it perfectly on top of the other one. Now to do that, you need to hold down your shift key. I'm looking down here while I do this. Uh, mouse down, and nothing changes there in the arrow. Let's just get rid of uh, those two there. So let's mouse down, drag it across, and we see once we just high, drag it onto that uh, image here, you get the little plus sign. Now the, what you must do now is release the mouse first before you release the shift key. So let's release the mouse, and that should be perfectly aligned with the layer underneath. Now, you're probably saying, David, how do I know it's perfectly aligned with the layer underneath? Well, there's a little quick trick here in Photoshop we're going to have a look at, and it's in your blend modes. Now, your blend modes are here. If you're not played around your blend modes, we're going to look at blend modes during this conversion method. Uh, so it says there, set the blending mode. It's a little drop-down or drop-up menu in this case. Uh, we're going to look at difference. Now, difference will show you the difference between the two layers. There's, these are the same image. If there's any difference, you'll get a white edge showing. And we don't we get this rather interesting looking dark dirgy uh, image coming up. I've still got the move tool uh, organized. I'm just going to just drag this across slightly, and you can actually see there what happens is if images aren't aligned properly. Now, you may be a JPEG shooter like I used to be, and then you, I'd take one exposure of the foreground and I'd shoot another one, one exposure for the highlights. Uh, I found this is really useful when you're dragging one layer on top of the other one, maybe to use the sky to drop the sky into the other one. Uh, it just lines up those layers, so it's a little trick there to learn. Use the difference blend mode just to see to make sure that you're aligned properly. Now I'm going to go back in history, and I'm just going to click on the blending change again, and that just shows that we are aligned. Now if your history is not showing again, just go into your window here. If you look down here, there's a tick next to your window. You can call all these up if you really wanted to. Uh, we're just looking at the history just to have it there. So we can actually go backwards and forwards and make things so much simpler. So we've looked at the different blend mode. Let's go back to normal. And we see there, as this image is sitting on top, it's normal blend mode, nothing really happening. If we just click off that, we can actually see that, yeah, that image underneath, there's nothing changing. Uh, the first thing you might want to do is to just look at your opacity here, which is the opacity of this uh, layer on the top here. If we just drag this across slightly, we're just blending those two together. It's very subtle, very interesting. It just changes the way in which your overall image is going to look. There's a finished product. 
Um, let's just click off that and see what's happening. You see there, it's a very thin image that's showing. Now then, there are things we can do. I'm going to take this back up to 100% again. And we've already looked at blend modes and looked at the difference. Let's have a look at blend modes and uh, see what else we can do. Uh, if I go to multiply, well, self-explanatory really, what's going to happen is all these tones in this top layer are going to multiply up on the ones underneath. And the easiest way to do that is to show you what's going to go on. And I'm going to just click on that. And you can see there, all over, it darkens up. Now you might like that. Quite a nice strong black and white conversion there. Uh, interesting looking uh, in here. Um, but what if you don't like all those blacks? You just like the way the clouds are really um, working. You don't like the way it's gone a bit dingy here. If you're not too keen to get a mask on there and get the paintbrush out and start faffing and fiddling around in there, um, we're going to let Photoshop do the work for us. And there's a very simple, quick way of doing this. If we go across to this layer here and just double click in that blue area, and this will bring up the layer style box. Now, don't get confused by this. There's lots happening here. There's all your styles here. These are your blending options for your layers. Look there, it says we're in multiply, which is what we're on here anyway. So it's multiply there, it's echoing things here. We can look at the opacity, we can actually have a go there and play with the opacity again in there. We're gonna leave those alone because what we want to do is to go down here into the blend if. Don't play around with any drop downs whatsoever. We're just gonna work with this layer. And importantly, we're gonna work with this layer and we're gonna concentrate on these dark tones we've created by having a multiply blend mode on the, over the top. We've multiplied those tones up. The blacks for me have just gone a bit too black. Uh, so if we have a look at this, we're going to take some of those blacks out of this top layer. And you can see there, things are lightening up, but uh-oh. Bit of a problem down here. It's a bit clunky. We've dragged that slider across. Uh, you've got pixels breaking out. It's really not a smooth gradation. There is a way of making it smooth. If we just take this back across again, so mouse down and drag it across. If you hold down the Alt key and just click on it, that will call split your sliders. Split your sliders. Very difficult to say. And if we then drag this across, you'll see there, there's a softer gradation tones. Where before we had those two together like that, and we dragged it across as one. Rather clunky. But if we go the Alt, click, drag, we're actually knocking out some of those dark tones. So all in there, we're doing a gradation of tones we're taking out in that area there. And one way to show you, now this is sticky, I forgot to tell you that. If we switch this off now, it's not going to go back to zero or anything else. When we call it up again, those same readings will be on there. But I just want to show you how much we've taken out of this top layer. Let's just click on this eye icon by the side of your background. And you can see where the checkerboard's coming through. We've got this very subtle change in tonality. It's taken out the darker tones, working towards taking out the mid-tones just slightly. And you can see there you've got your checkerboard breaking out all over the place. Switch that back on again. That's what it looks like in a multiplayer blend mode with some of those darker pixels knocked out. We can take that out altogether and show you what it looks like with it on. And don't forget, you've got the fine tuning of your opacity. So Without using mass, without doing selections, without painting on it, rubbing, erasing whatsoever, we've split this down, we've dragged one on top of the other, we've used Photoshop to actually um, create this interesting black and white conversion for us. Um, blend modes, one of the things you must do is play around with your blend modes, and I'm gonna take this back up to 100%. Uh, if you click on it, and we just go to darken, any pixel in the top layer which is darker than the bottom layer will actually darken it so let's have a look at that happens so it's taking into the sky you see it's not touching these mid grays here you might quite like that if your uh, mouse is activate uh, your scroll mouse is activated you see it's got a blue line around the outside there once you start scrolling you can actually go through your blend modes and I really suggest you do this. You have a look at all your different blend modes because there might be something in there which really suits your style of photography. Some have completely washed out. But you see, every one you'd scroll through, you're going to get some kind of different effect. And then we go back to difference, subtract, and all the other ones at the bottom there. Let's just go straight back up to uh, multiply again. So I'm multiplying those tones out. Uh, we've got the flexibility of working with the opacity. Don't forget to play around. We've not used mass. We've not used erasers. We've not used anything which is really too tricky. Once you get into the groove of doing this, it's a very easy way of uh, doing 
uh, black and white conversions and making them look slightly different than um, you do with a normal adjustment panel. Uh, it's one method we'll look at, there's lots more I can bring to you. Um, we're going to recap now just to make sure you know what's uh, and remember what's going on. We uh, called up the image, we split the channels, so we went into the dropout menu here and we went to in our channels menu, went to channels and we split the channels, so remember we had the RG and the B channels there. We split the channels, we went across, we dragged one top of the other by choosing the move tool and the shift key dragged it on top of the other one. Remember we released the mouse before the shift key, we checked the blend mode which was difference, which is in there in your blend mode just to make sure they're aligned properly. We had a look at the opacity, blended the opacity, we called up the layer style box. We saw about uh, the sliders, how the sliders can slide along and knock out pixels which are to the left. If I drag, drag the white one across, it'd knock out pixels to the right. We saw those pixels knocked out by looking at the layer. We held down the Alt key, Option key, I think, on your Mac, and just split those slides and, and made the gradation nice and easy. We then played around in different blend modes, we played around the opacities. You've got those slides to play around with, so really we're just playing with sliders and opacity and blend modes, and you're creating uh, an interesting black and white conversion. Quite quickly, once you do this once or twice, it's a very simple, uh, easy method to convert to black and white. Uh, and that's, I'm going to leave you with that now, uh, to play around with your images. Uh, bob across to maxbacksphotos.com. Have a look at some of the black and whites I've been working on. I've just got a new project up there which is called uh, Close to the Sea, or uh, at the Sea's Edge. I forgot what I've called it now, but it's on there. Um, uh, thanks for calling by, and until the next time, of course, that's uh, bye for now.